this day, I must say, peace be with you. And all of you. On this beautiful day, your question for you today is when have you felt free? When have you felt free? When have you experienced freedom? Um, so think about times in your life you felt free. Um, any any examples you want to give me of feeling free? Biking. What's that? Biking. Biking, yes. You feel free when you're biking. Pauline feels free that way. Excellent. Uh, Mary? Okay, when you left in seven, eight, when you got the car, thank you, thank you. You felt freedom. And Carolyn? The boonies of Vermont, you felt free. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. It reminds me, I felt free uh, when Patricia and I had a chance to go for a day to Vermont uh, a couple weeks ago. It was just, we're away out of cell phone range. It was great. It was great. Uh, any other examples? Um, Michael. I thought it was free years ago when skiing in, this, uh, in Stowe, Vermont. In Stowe, Vermont. Free. Yes. I can see you going down, whipping down those slopes. Free. So today's, today's uh, scripture is about feeling free, feeling free, the experience of freedom. And how do we achieve that freedom or how, what is the gift of that freedom? And what is it like to taste, to taste that freedom, to taste it? Um, this July, 2022 in Florida, a brand new attorney, and actually she was entering law, she had just passed the bar, and she was gonna do commercial law, car insurance, things like that. Uh, she heard about this man in prison and she didn't know what, what to do, but she said, I need to free this person. Uh, I, I, I think he's innocent. And so Natalie Figures was just starting as, not as a criminal lawyer, just a business lawyer. She was also three months pregnant. I mean, how, how could she do this? Uh, and nobody else was able to free him and maybe maybe he deserved to be there. How could she save this possibly innocent man locked up for 32 years for murder in the state of Florida? Natalie Figures. So this new attorney, she got to work. She did a lot of work. Pro she's not getting many coming in. So she's, she's her, her child is developing. Uh, she's, the money's not coming in. She's working on this case and no pay. And she starts digging. She finds out from the police reports that there were nine sets of fingerprints at the crime scene, but none of them matched the person who is in prison uh, for 32 years. So she said, okay, I need to start there. Maybe he wasn't even at the scene of the crime. And uh, none of them belonged to Thomas James is his name. And then there was a key witness, Dorothy Wilson, who helped to put him behind bars. And so she said, oh, I need to speak to the prosecution witness. And this person refused to speak to her. But that was like the only person that the police were able to use or the criminal justice system used to put Thomas behind bars. Now for 32 years, for murder. And so Natalie called up this witness who again refused to speak to her. And Natalie said, um, if God tells you to give me a call when I hang up, please call me. I'm going to answer, but I'm doing this because I know he's an innocent person. And I'm doing this because God put me here. And, and Natalie started crying and, and then she just hung up. And she's driving away on a highway in Florida. 10 minutes later, the person calls, she pulls over and this key witness calls back and said, why did you cry? Um, he's, is he paying you? And Natalie said, no, no, I'm, I'm doing this pro bono, uh, 2000 hours on my own and so far it's adding up. I'm not getting any money at all. And at that point, the key witness broke down and said, I know. It wasn't him. No, it wasn't him. And that is how this July, July 2022, 
Natalie, a first time car insurance lawyer, helped to clear an innocent man of a murder sentence after he spent 32, a third of a century in prison. And Thomas Raymond James is now a free man. How does this new freedom feel? Yes, he has regret, but yes, at the same time, he is deliriously happy. Uh, and he's also incredibly grateful to this lawyer when all, all the other lawyers couldn't help him, she found a way for a murder that he did not commit to free him. The attorney, Natalie, figures she's also transformed. She's been set free. She said, sometimes in this process, she said, I doubted myself. I hadn't done it before. So I just went off of my gut and prayer and my faith. And when I finally heard he was going to be released, way longer than it should have been, she said, all I could do was say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. It felt so real, it was so real. She says her life has changed. Her life has changed. She said, knowing that you can save a life. What, what a feeling. What a feeling that is. Work she's doing helped to save this life. She said, nothing compares to that. And her life has been transformed, and now she's devoting a lot of her life to finding others that she can also help to set free. Lives are being changed. Lives are being changed. Experience freedom. Experiencing freedom to be set free. That, that's what today's words of scripture were about that Carla read for us today. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. You'll, be, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Continue. That's a word sometimes we miss. The Greek word is meno, and it's repeated many, many times. Meno, meno, meno. Continue, continue, continue. Continue, Jesus said. He did not say, okay, do my word once. Walk away. You're done. Have some chocolate, sit down, continue, continue, uh, continue caring for your neighbor, uh, continue loving God, continue practicing compassion and justice in the Jesus way, continue, continue waking up in the morning and taking another step in your journey. Um, that attorney, Natalie, Natalie, realizes she needs to continue. She's found her life calling and she's going to continue in this way. She said nothing compares to that experience, that freedom that she is tasting too. Now she knows why God put her here on earth. I mean, what an amazing feeling to know that, to be set free in, in your life calling. Um, experiencing this freedom, this transformation, this coming alive, uh, that's what the Reformation is all about. There's Reformation that thing happened in history, what? Half a millennium ago, is that the way to say it? Half of tomorrow, it would be 504 years ago tomorrow is when Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King Jr., but Martin Luther nailed 95 arguments to the door of a university church in Wittenberg, Germany. And his arguments were about, you're set free. You don't have to depend upon giving money to people to be set free or, or having somebody in a church far away about that. You, God has already set you free. And Martin Luther set out to, to reform the corruption that he saw in the church of his day. That's what reformation comes from, reforming, bringing freedom to people that don't know it. Natalie fought against corruption in the Florida criminal justice system. Natalie fought to free people. Martin Luther fought against corruption in the church. Martin Luther fought to free people. 
the, the choir saying, oh, freedom, oh, freedom, freedom is coming. Oh, yes, I know. Yes, I know. But the people say in our lesson, and perhaps we say it too today, we're not slaves, we're free. What are you talking about? I don't see any change on us. Do you see chains on me here? Maybe you will when you come to our Christmas play and see a Christmas carol and the ghost from the past, but usually we don't see those chains on us, right? We don't see them. And Jesus says, well, if you sin at all, you're then a slave to sin. You're a slave to sin. You might not see it, but you're a slave. Um, and sin, sin is a word we can get wrapped up in, but it, it's and, and, and moralize it and, and, and get higher and mightier than others. But really, when you get down to it, sin at its core, it, it's, it's brokenness. At its core, sin is, it, it's, it's a broken relationship. Um, we are meant for certain kinds of relationships, but, but sin is showing how those, those relationships are, are busted up. Uh, busted up relationships, sin. It happens to us as individuals when we, we don't love ourselves the way that God loves us. God loves us so much, but it's a busted up relationship if we're not also learning to love ourselves the way that God loves us. And we can become slaves, slaves to uh, alcohol, slaves to gambling, um, Busted up relationships. That's what sin is. When we don't love our neighbors the way that God loves our neighbors, um, we can be trapped in patterns of locking up young black men for 32 years for a crime they did not commit. That's what sin is. That's a busted up relationship not the way we are created to be. And so, and so today's scripture and every day, Jesus invites us to, to, to break free, to be healed, to be transformed, to taste this freedom. What is it like to taste this freedom? Jesus says, continue in my word. If you stick with this, if you can stick with it, living out what I tell you, you are my disciples for sure. And then you will experience for yourselves the truth and the truth will set you free. It will set you free. Thomas James in Florida is now experiencing this truth, this freedom, this transformation of free man. So what would our world be like if, like so many others who are wrongly in prison, who, who are disproportionately brown and black men, could taste this freedom? What would our world be like? And, and Natalie, Natalie, the attorney who freed Thomas, is now experiencing this truth. She's now tasting this, this transformation, and her life has changed. She said, nothing compares. Nothing compares to that feeling of knowing what you have done to free somebody. She said, now she knows why she is here. And wouldn't that be amazing to know exactly why we are here? And, and just to taste that, just to taste that freedom. And so... And what would our world be like if there were so many Natalies that could be tasting this freedom right now, knowing why God has put us here? By continuing in Jesus' word, listening to the word, praying, supporting, having supportive communities. Um, we can sing, I mean, that song, Oh Freedom, Oh Freedom. Oh, freedom, it's coming. Yes, I know. I know it's coming. I know. And here at Payson Park, uh, we're, we're, we're taking some steps. Uh, we courageously stepped into the ministry of the outdoor church at the beginning of the pandemic. Other churches, you know, had stepped away. Uh, recently, the director of the outdoor church, Stephen Bingaman, came here and said, thank you so much. People were so scared at the start of the pandemic. And, and hungry. It was a dire situation. We didn't know how those few weeks we were going to even feed people on the streets. And you stepped in when others stepped away. And we're tasting that. And we're saying yes. And we're, we're finding why we are here. Part of our mission. And it, it's an amazing taste, isn't it? 
to have that. And they say, the prayer that you wrote for us, we say every Sunday. They said it this Sunday at the worship that our previous wife, Tom, Catherine, wrote for us on behalf of our church. What would our world be like if so many could taste that? What would the world be like if we could join with millions across the world who are doing work just like that? stepping in. And here at Payson Park, we, we've begun some steps. We've courageously uh, stepped in and begun the work of addressing, uh, for example, the ways racism seeps into our systems, into our lives. We don't see those chains, but the way it comes in and uh, we've, been, we've worked on a statement, our councils adopt it, we need to revisit it. Um, we are an anti-racist church and it's on our website, um, but it's just the beginning. Of, of trying to actively grapple with these issues. And we're beginning to taste that, that this, this could be an incredible transformation for us, for those around us, for forgiveness. But what would our world be like if we could join with so many other groups and people around the world doing this kind of work to create the beloved community that the other Martin Luther talked about, Martin Luther King, Junior, continuing the words of Martin Luther 504 years ago. And, and again, Echo Am I, Oh Freedom. Uh, can you just taste that? I, I love that song. The, the choir did it. We're just jumping for that. Think about it. Um, and here in Payson Park, we've tasted the joy of caring for each other. Um, and I, I've seen you walk with each other. Uh, sitting among us here is someone with a, a wonderful ministry of cards and, and the words of love that they share and, and is so supportive that the way we are continuing, continuing in Jesus' word, uh, trying to get out of these busted relationships and come into the relationships where we are meant to be transforming relationships. Um, and, and just the just the joy of yesterday. I don't know who was here yesterday. It was just incredible experience to be here. Both of me were here uh, at, at 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 our bouncy house festival outside, and, and just the joy of that, and and the joy of uh, buying and eating chocolates that we know are slave free, because often cocoa farmers are kept in impoverished conditions, um, and that's a lot of the the regular trademark chocolates we, we purchased, but we just to taste that freedom, that's what chocolate really tastes like when you're not supporting slavery. Um, and, and what would our world be like? What would our world be like if we all could taste that in the beloved community? Wouldn't the world just be set free? Wouldn't that be an amazing taste? Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom. Freedom is coming. This is what my faith tells me. Freedom is coming. Oh, yes, I know. Jesus is coming. Oh, yes, I know. Thanks be to God that we can sing today, led by our choir, Freedom is Coming. Thanks be to God we can sing today at the end of our service today, the song of the Reformation, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Thanks be to God who on this day, continues to set us free. Amen.